Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. My name is Mahmoud Mohammed Zajali. My name is Zulfa Saif al Bakhtashi. My name is Abdullah Amr Sultan, Amr Sultan, Amr Sultan, Amr al Hajri. My name is Khadija Ibrahim al Baluchi. My name is Mohammed Salem Hamid Saeed al Wahabi. I'm 22 years old. My family is originally from Masfat and I am Omani. And I'm Omani. And I am Omani. I am 21 years old and I am Omani. I am Abdullah and I am Omani. In the Sultanate of Oman, we are around 4.2 million people in population. Uh, around 2.4 million are Omani nationals. Of those people, we're talking about more than 60% who are under the age of 30. Oman had just changed in 1970 when uh, Sultan Qaboos um, overthrew his father Said and embarked on a program of rapid modernization, socioeconomic development, and opening to the outside world. One of the major changes has been in education. Oman offers free education to uh, all of its children. The promise of education is that young people will be qualified to do many sorts of jobs. There is a real question as to how qualified many Omanis are. I get a lot of people complaining that the university is not helping them. And I would ask them, so have you done anything, you know? Uh, if you want to complain, sure, do complain. But just give me solutions. Um, some of you, it's their first time in the lounge, so I'm just going to briefly talk about the lounge. Um, the lounge is a business hub for youth. Uh, we'd like to um, inspire the a younger generation to start working on their projects, um, their talents, uh, to provide them with a sustainable platform um, to help them grow uh, their talents. We started a project called the lounge or al rudha in Arabic. This project aims to be a physical hub for youth projects and youth ideas. No, because it's not We created the space for people to explore their real potential and their real skills, to see what they can literally add to this community and what they can do with themselves. Every young person should be an opportunity grabber. You see an opportunity, don't be too scared to get it. Like, just go out there and get it. We are in a society that mainly looks more favorably towards public sector jobs. There was a survey that was done by, I think, the National Center for Statistics and Information that, said, that found that more than 80% of high school students are favoring government jobs over private sector jobs. IMF is anticipating that the uh, private sector in Oman needs to create 40,000 jobs uh, on an annual uh, uh, basis. And trust me, uh, the public sector is not going to create 40,000 jobs. It needs to come from private sector and it need to, uh, needs to come uh, also from uh, uh, startups. Entrepreneurship, or what we're doing here at the lounge, it's a way to a solution, to break that chain of routine that every single young Armani is going through, which is grow up, go to college, get a job, get married, die. That's not how we're supposed to do it. All right, update. So we just crossed the Abu Dhabi border. Finally, after like a long, long queue, and we're heading right now to the IGN conference. 
nerds, yeah, gamers, uh, developers from all around the, uh, the GCC area come under one roof to share thoughts and ideas and the latest games. My friends are going to the conference, I'm gonna go with them, I'm gonna have some good time. Period. Oh yeah. Muscat to us is like a bubble. In Muscat, I'm talking here in Muscat only, our young, younger generations are so influenced by the Western culture, <laughs> but the Omani um, society is very cautious when it comes to risk taking. When ever since we were like 18, we know what's coming ahead. I'm gonna graduate when I'm 24, I'm gonna work until 26, and then I'm gonna get married, I'm gonna have kids, I'm gonna have a house, and that's it. Whoever wants to like, do something different, you're wrong. Everyone judges you. I'd like it if that changes too. Like, don't plan out my life for me. Let me just be. Anything we do as young Armanis that our parents didn't do when they were young, it's taboo, period. Like we are simple people, we have like good jobs, but if by the end of the day we come back to the village and we turn to the بهلة تختلف عن مسقط أول شيء بهلة اللي عايشين في بهلة هم ناس تقليديين حافظين على عاداتهم وتقاليدهم يعني بهلة ما تأثرت ما تأثرت بالتطور بالعولمة كثير الناس نتحص لهم محافظين في مسقط لا ما يعقل فالحين نبت قاربين if if I did anything here anything bad or good anything bad or good from my face and my family name they will know before I go back to my home my family know that I did I did that thing that's different my friend حميد this my friend حياك حميد كيف الأمور؟ مو الأخبار طيب؟ الله يسلمك، هي وش هالصدفة؟ ها؟ أجازة؟ ها؟ ها وراي سير روح، أنا بوقف هنا المحل. يلا. حياك الله. أوكي. التطور أثر على مسقط. أول شيء في مسقط العاصمة. الناس يجيوها من جميع الجنسيات، مختلف الثقافات، مختلف الأديان. فطبيعي أنت تعيش في في مكان متطور. Every country has its history, and I believe every young generation, every new generation should learn about their history because it defines who you are as a country or a citizen. Where we live, it is down here. When we go there, when we sit, there's a few people are living there. But I sincerely think that Oman is right now in a box. We should break that box, literally break that box. There's a, a, a tug, I think, amongst many young people between respecting the order of society, respecting their elders, respecting their family, and getting what they think is due them. Yeah, in 2011, actually, what happened, it was like this accumulation of all the troubles. The undemocracy, freedom of right, the right of the people, it's not there. Uh, I don't believe the system was listening to the people. It was also only a message coming from up to down. No message being heard coming from down to up. I'm against any violence, but... Uh, 
So Har had its own share in 2011. We have a saying in Arabic, it's like the stick that broke the camel back. If you spoke to almost any Omani adult, they almost invariably would say that before 1970 there was nothing, and after 1970 everything started to happen, and the reason for that was Sultan Qaboos. <laughs> بن عبودة بن سليم بن راشد بن حسين بن محمد بن راشد سيابي إيه سيابي كان يبقى يبقى قدامهم قابوس سيدة سيدة الكلام كلام قابوس سيدة من ناحية من ناحية أن تو تو المعرفة أكثر ما شو أول أول فوق بوش وفوق حمير يسيروا تو لا تو سيير تتغير الأمور تتغير سمع أما تقول الحمد لله زين. تعال تعال كم؟ إيه ما مدرسة بس هذا الحين هم تساوي إنه جديد هذا جديد هذا جديد هذا جديد ما مال بس هو كان كذا المدرسة يعني هو لما أنا أدى هنا هم سكنتهم دائما هنا سكنهم أول من يوم أنا مولودة وأنا حصلتهم هنا ساكنين هذا المنطقة بيت جد السيف هو كان شيخ المنطقة مختلفة الحين صارت أسهل الحين كل شيء سهل كل شيء ما في شيء صعوبة الحين ما حد يسوق الماي على رأسه يجيب الماي من البئر أو يروح يشغل دي مكينة الحين كل شيء كل ماي في البيت صار الحين الماي في البيت من الولف كل واحد عنده ماي في البيت أو في صارت أسهل الأمور الحياة صارت سهلة وجد الحين صار أحسن عن أول. The government, like other governments in the Gulf, um, assumed responsibility for development and which way that was going to go, and therefore it had a very strong control of the economy. And there's been serious attempts into get the government out of the economy as much as possible. So Riyadh has a, um, a, a huge and challenging task, uh, but we are very glad to take it on, which is to see that the views of young people towards work is not only for working in the public sector, as it is very common in this part uh, of, the, of the region, that it also looks at entrepreneurship and looks at starting a small enterprise, for example. Uh, you can't rely on the government to solve all your problems. You can't rely on the leadership of the country to solve every single uh, problem. Uh, I believe in free education. I believe in uh, uh, free uh, uh, health care. But at the same time, what am I bringing to my uh, uh, nation? They can create their own career at the same time. They will give them the ambitious to be entrepreneurs in the future, to continue in what you are doing, not only to think like, after graduating, I need a job. No, you can also create your own job. You can create an own opportunity for yourself and for people with you at the same time. That kind of attitude must be uh, a core uh, of our uh, uh, culture, especially with the leadership change that will eventually uh, uh, happen. Uh, right now, the government has become oversaturated uh, and can no longer employ youth. So the only solution would be to divert them to the private sector, whether it's to work in the private sector or to create their own jobs, to, to come up uh, with their own businesses. It's all about entrepreneurship, uh, creating jobs for yourself and for, for, for the youth around you. We are currently working on Oman's first venture capitalism and entrepreneurial um, conference to educate people about what venture capitalism is. Yeah, everything is right. I'm not going
Right now, when it comes to funding for startups and program and projects here in Oman, you have you know your governmental uh, uh, funding programs. Who well, have been doing great so far? The public authority for SME development, which is Riyadh, and it is about transferring the vast Yet there aren't the as many presidency. innovative ideas and things like that. And it's mainly all governmental, you know, so this is kind of the private sector's um, part of funding. We don't celebrate failure is a, is a regular complaint. So, uh, and these chances, we don't get it as, as much uh, here in Oman. We're trying to create the future leaders for this country. The youth are the driving force of every society, and they are the future. Our, our role is to prepare them for that to instill the right um, values, you know, and um, to make sure that they're ready to, to, to participate them from now in the economical development or economical planning of the, of the country. Politically, the immediate challenge in Oman has to be succession. The Sultan is 75, he's not in good health, he may be around for another five years, another ten years, we don't know. The problem for Omanis is that the Sultan doesn't have any children and the succession process has never been tried. Even in a smooth transition, changes will be set in way because the current system was created explicitly for the needs and wishes of this Sultan. Um, hopefully it will be a smooth uh, uh, change. Everybody is concerned. Everybody knows that we love our uh, uh, Sultan. Uh, it's uncertain what would happen uh, after him. Uh, we believe that there is a plan. Uh, we trust uh, him and we trust our uh, uh, you know, royal uh, uh, family. But, uh, you know, um, Oman is not the same Oman 45 years uh, uh, ago. There's so much, you know, whether it's 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 a it's a kindness, a generosity of Omanis. You know, we happen to be welcoming as a nation, and I hope this never ever changes with our youth. I'm so excited! Can we swim? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you can swim. We're a peaceful nation. With the great leadership of His Majesty, we've been able to develop this reputation. I hope that remains as it is. I hope we continue in the same footsteps and. Uh, complete the journey that he has begun. There is a, a sense among most Omanis that uh, uh, he is their leader and that he does care about them. I'm not sure what could happen when His Majesty will no longer be the Sultan. He's just this huge... I don't know where I start with this subject because it's such a big thing and it's such a scary thing because uh, as I was young Armanis, we demand so much, and he's been answering all our demands, one way or another. What if this next person doesn't listen to us as much as he did? Then what? It's really scary to just think about it, because I don't know who's going to come next. However, I think he has it all planned out. He's not just going to let us, um, you know, suffer. And this is the danger, we need to communicate more over here. We, I don't want to live in this dreamland that we are all okay and they are fine. We've seen what's happened to countries like uh, Syria and Libya. And, uh, we certainly don't want to wish that on Omar. Sultan has uh, presided over a fairly rapid growth for years and years. I think Oman has a good chance of, of getting through the succession crisis and getting through the economic issues. A man 40 years ago had a dream, and he worked towards that dream, and he made it happen. It's His Majesty Sultan Qaboos. When he ruled the country, he was so young himself, and he was, he managed to do it. and. I think he sees that in us. Doing what we do here in the lounge is an entirely new experience. And uh, 
I really hope that what we're doing here can accomplish all the things that we want to. You know, exposing uh, the youth of Oman to an entire new working dynamics and uh, hoping that we are leading by example. Happiness is a big thing. But happiness is not financial happiness, okay? Money is not everything in this world. Living and working for what you love is what, mat what matters the most. And that's always what we try to print here in the lunch. If you really want to show your country how much it means to you, if you really love and value your country, then work to make it better. Sometimes the, the, the simplest answers are the best answers. Um, youth have the energy and the drive. Uh, the seasoned uh, segments of the society have the expertise. If we can find the formula to that, then this will be great. It is upon us, this young generation, to take our mind to the next level. Yeah.